Hi everyone, it's Detrina from the Bee Mat and the Alluring Bee Boutique. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with the bead mat and all my different avenues of teaching and what I've been up to for a few minutes. Um, first of all, the bead mat is up and running and I did finally work on the pricing plans for the subscription levels. Um, still for right now and probably till at least the middle of this month and maybe the end of this month. If you're a registered user on the site, you're going to have access to all the different levels of content. Just so you can kind of get a feel for where I'm going with this and see what you might, how you might want to choose your plan later on. And plus, even if you register for the free plan, you can always change it anytime. And um, there is no expiration on your plans or anything. You don't have to worry about continually signing up over and over or anything like that. So I already have that video out, and I'll put the link um, up here in, above the hovering eye so that you can go check that out if you want to see more about how, uh, how that's set up. And um, I did make some pricing changes, so things are a little bit different than what they were when I talked about it in the video. But there are changes for the better on your end because it's less. Okay, so now I want to go over, like, the last couple of uh, Mastering T Your Basic Techniques video I did was about brick stitch and different styles of brick stitch, um, flat brick stitch. And on the one video I showed you guys how to do the um, even number of beads on the on your varying rows of brick stitch and I made those little piece of this uh, band right here so then I went on and um, on, the, on the bead mat there is a post about all of this and there is a pattern for this bracelet but I went on and I continued with both of my strips and I'm using square stitch once I got them started to a certain point then I went on and used square stitch to add the length to the bands like I showed you in the video and then I just um, went ahead and made a beautiful bracelet out of it. And this is called the Springtime Bracelet. And I do have a pattern for it on the bead mat in the shop. And it came out really pretty. And I just love the way it looks. It's just really gorgeous. I've finally decided to make something with these 8 Delicas that I didn't cut apart. So it's also this bracelet is for sale on the AlluringBeeBoutique.com. But um, I finished this one a little bit differently than I did on the pattern. I went ahead and used these little clamshell connectors here and it really just polished up the look. So I really was happy with the way that came out. So then I was working on a new uh, brick stitch around a frame video for Skillshare. Well, it's like this. I On Skillshare you separate your videos out into all these little short five to ten minute long segments and I've been trying for five days to upload those videos on Skillshare, and I just could not get them to upload no matter what I did. So, good news for you guys is I'm now, today is, is uploading this particular uh, video to YouTube in its full form. And you guys can check it out. And what it was interesting about these earrings is, um, this is another one of my pin try experiments. I had seen on Pinterest this technique, I'll show you on the back, it's easier to see, this technique of doing this little scalloping around the inner edge of a hoop, a soldered closed hoop. And I was able to figure out how to do it. And so then I just got, you know, a little carried away and I went ahead and made this cute little pair of earrings. And like I said, you'll be able to check that video out here within the next day or two on YouTube. I think they're really pretty. So um, another post on the bead mat, which is not available anywhere else, is um, the tutorial for this beautiful pendant. So this is a little stone. Uh, it's a composite stone from Hallcraft Beads. I think I got them at Michael's. Anyhow, I made this little beaded bezel for it, even though it's a bead. It looks like a cabochon, and it's just beautiful. So I called it the Stone Mosaic Pendant. And um, although I didn't show you how to put this little loop of beads on at the end, I'm sure you can figure it out because all I did basically was sew between that super duo and that super duo. The, uh, there's three rows of super duos on this thing. One here, then another set in the middle, and then another set here on the front from which I added these little opaque uh, fire polished beads into. But on the back side, the fir very first initial row of super duos, on the middle hole, the hole up here towards the middle, I just made a little loop of beads for a bail. And it came out really pretty. So if you want to learn how to make that, 
The full tutorial is on the bead mat blog. So now, um, let's talk about what I've been f messing around with. So, I've <laughs> been playing with some copper and trying to, you know, build my skills on metal smithing and working with metals. And so, the first thing I did was make um, these beautiful little ho hook and eye clasps. And this is just a peyote stitch bracelet that I came up with with um, these beautiful Navajo white beads. And then I used a couple of different colors of lighter and darker beige beigeish kind of beads here made this little stripe pattern it's a really silky and supple feeling bracelet I just love it but then I uh, decided to make my own little clasps and so I made these little split rings here let me see if I can get a better picture of them so I made these little split rings here and I attached those on one end and then I made these little um, hook clasps with the wire wrapped loops at the bottom so you know you your string cannot slip out where you stitch it onto your bracelet. And then I just made an extra little jump ring to hook onto each of these split rings and give that just a little bit extra length to the bracelet. You don't have to do that part. Uh, it just depends on what length that you actually need for your project. So it's really pretty. It came out really nice. I may try to do a little quick write-up about how I made this uh, pattern. On this side, you can see that my little diagonals are, are slanted to the right. Then in the center, I came down uh, off of that to the left towards the bottom on this little V look for the center. And then come the other direction with my little uh, different colored lines this way. And it's really cute. And I just figured it out and just played around till I got it right. But it's a really pretty little bracelet. If you're interested in something on that... Shoot on over to the bead mat or uh, over on Facebook and um, the bead mat group and send me a message and let me know if you'd like to see a little bit more about this bracelet. Now, I'm doing a write up um, sometime over the weekend for these earrings. Basically, this is my exact same design that I use for my advent Adventuring Dreams pendant, which is a class available on Skillshare. But um, I had these beautiful little rose luster mini silkies and I thought well I'm going to try that instead so I wound up using some gold other gold toned beads and things like that and then I made um, some ear wires here with some gold fill wire that I have around and they just came out really elegant and beautiful and on the back that's what they look like you can see that a lot of your foil back the foil back is completely protected on these big rivalies so that you know, any skin oils and or you know, bumping up against something won't damage that foil back here on these beautiful big rivalies. So I am doing a write up on these, so you can look forward to seeing that on the bead mat. And then also, um, for a limited time, I'll probably make the Adventuring Dreams pattern free to a certain level of subscriber. I haven't figured that part out yet. I may make it available for to free for all the registered users for a week or something. So you want to check back often to see when I get this up if you want to make something like that. So now it brings me around to a couple of other things. So of course you know that I'm building up uh, my basics for metal smithing at home videos. And we already did one where I showed you guys how to mix up pickle solution and uh, liver of sulfur solution into the little crock pots. So that was like a starting point. And um, now... Over on the bead mat, there's a great little video that I did, and it's available only over there. And what, what I show you guys how to do in that is to actually take a bench pin, how you set up the bench pin. And it's pretty decent. I actually got some really good uh, angles and stuff in there. And then the jeweler saw. So if you want to go over there and check that out, it will show you exactly how to put the blades in the saw, how to set this up on your desk. And then also I went ahead and um, showed you guys how to show you how to make this little charm, this little heart, which um, in the video I didn't get the texturing part done, but I have since textured it. And I put a little, punched a little hole right there and added some chain and it just made this cute little adorable copper charm. It's really neat. Um, something I just did off the cuff was uh, I have a book that I got it um, over the holidays 
that shows how to make you know different little metal findings and all kinds of stuff because I'm really interested in working with metal so I've been trying my hand at several things so anyhow I made this cute little copper bead cap and put on to this little Howlite disc coin bead it's a Howlite dyed red it's really pretty and then I just uh, used a some copper wire and I flattened out one end for a head pin down here and then I came up and made this pretty little wire wrapped loop at the top so it's really secure and I textured the petals just a little bit on this little bead cap it was really unique and I just love the way it came out but here is the piece de la resistance that I have finally been able to figure out how to do a bezel with um, soldering with uh, bezel wire which just goes around the stone here and then some sheet copper to make this little back plate and you can see I got to do a lot more polishing to finish this up but um, this is the first attempt where I actually got the bezel wire to solder to the back plate which made me very happy but you can see I might have a few little gaps in there but I'm not going to stress out about it because the copper is not that expensive and it's I couldn't really tell I can't get my fingernail under it but I'm just gonna leave it as is for now because I'm using this piece as a practice piece for learning to polish using my Dremel and some of the accessories that come with that and so we'll get into this kind of stuff a whole lot more working with metal this is one of my things I'm definitely working on this year and I just wanted to show you really quick and I wanted to let you know that there's a great little video up uh, on how to get started with the bench pin and the jeweler saw and I also put some links in there uh, to these products uh, where I got them and where I actually found them even cheaper than where I got them I got my bench pin which is the Euro 2 bench pin I got it off of Amazon and it was a really good deal uh, I waited of course until I had enough stuff in my order to get the free shipping which is what I usually do but if you want to head over there and grab us some of this stuff, I've got the links uh, right on to, into the post about this items and about this, um, you know, these tools. So this one is the Artistic Wire Jeweler Saw, and it comes with 36 blades, 12 each of three different sizes. And so it was a good deal where I got when I got it, but it's a, even a better deal over there on Amazon, so you might want to check that out. You'll also need to invest, if you want to start sawing on metal, you'll have to get some cut lube. And there's also um, some links to this on my, on the article. So that is basically where we're at today. If you can notice, I have this big piece of cardboard here underneath my little bead mat. Because I'm going to go ahead and do a video next. I'll be working on this today. On your basic soldering setup. And if I have time in the video... I'm going to show you guys how to make the little bald head pin that I talked about in my previous video that I used for an ear wire. And I also did this little tiny silver ring. So this is sterling. You know, it did a really pretty good job of soldering that because you cannot even see the seam. And it's really even all the way around. So I got my little join section done really well when I soldered that little cute little ring. But a lot of the things that I'm learning in regards to working with metal, wire weaving, and things like that, um, I'm getting off of Craftsy. And I am a big fan of Craftsy. I myself pay for the Craftsy Unlimited. And I do have an affiliate link that I'm going to throw up. Um, it's on my website. Um, I'll put it in the description box below because I cannot put it in the eye up above, but I will put it in the description box below. If you want to check out Craftsy, um, I will, I've got a couple of good different bargains, like a seven day free trial. Um, you can also just purchase classes off of there, and I've got one right now that's good till the 11th. For all their classes, there are under $20 a piece, which if you prefer not to subscribe and pay monthly, you can purchase classes on there, and I have purchased several. So we'll talk about more more about that later on, and I'm going to do a blog post about it also. But in the meantime, you might want to check it out by clicking on my links. And um, if you decide to sign up, you know, that helps me just a little bit. So that's wonderful. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. 
go ahead and head over to the bead mat and check out some of the great posts and some of the exclusive content that's over there. There are several tutorials available there that are not located anywhere else. And I'm going to be also moving a few of my Skillshare classes over there eventually in the next few weeks and the upcoming months. So stick around with me. There's plenty of great new stuff coming from the bead mat and the Alluring Bead Boutique this year.